Hey guys, good morning. So today what I thought I would do real quick before I throw this uh, harness into our P48, uh, which is our 1948 Chevy 3100 project, um, I thought I would go through the fuse block and explain how you can test uh, and identify all of your power sources and your output power from the fuse block so you know how to wire things up. Um, you know, wiring I know it can be kind of confusing to people so I thought I would just give a quick explanation of what I'm doing and then I'll get to work and show you guys how this all mounts into the truck. Is you set your multimeter, okay just a standard regular old beat up multimeter and I set it to continuity test and what continuity is is when you have a connection between your two probes. So I've got one probe in common which is ground initially or essentially and I've got one on volts and then I set my meter to continuity and when I touch these two probes together I get a signal and I get an, a measurement of resistance on the wire uh, that's in ohms so if we're going to test our ignition switch here make sure that the key comes out first that means it's in the off position and I'm going to connect my one of my leads to the battery lug on the back of the ignition switch and all of the other leads are dead there's no power flowing to anywhere which is what it should be in the off position right so if we switch to accessory now I get power or I get continuity between my battery lug and my accessory so that means when I have 12 volts battery power going in here I'm gonna have 12 volts battery power coming out um, to my accessory circuit. If I switch it to key on position, which would be your ignition on, um, I still have power on my accessory lug, okay, because all of those devices that get powered in the accessory position should still have power in the on position. And additionally, I also now have power on my key on lug. So this lug will go out to the coil and it'll go out to uh, the ECM to turn the ECM on. Um, anything else that needs to be turned on when the key is in the on position, fuel pump, circuit, etc. So now the last position, which I don't have power on yet, is our start position. And that one's going to be kind of hard to demonstrate here because i got to hold the key in the start position. But if you turn the key all the way to start, then you get continuity on your start circuit. So that wire will go out to the starter and that will actually engage the starter solenoid and fire the starter over. So that's how you test uh, an, a basic ignition switch like that. Um, we're going to do something a little more advanced here in the P48. So I'm going to have two circuits in parallel. One for the standard ignition switch that will be hidden with a key and the other for um, an electronic push start RFID system that we're going to use to actually uh, control starting the truck um, and control access to the doors. In order to test this, what I did first was remove all the fuses. So I took every fuse out of the fuse block. And I did that so that there would be no confusion. Um, if, if the fuse is connecting a circuit and you probe, you want to check continuity from your power going into the fuse block, um, if the fuse is still in line, then that means the wire coming off of that fuse going to our accessory or our device or a wiper switch or whatever it's going to, um, that wire will be live as well. And it makes it a little bit harder to identify what's going on, what's coming into the fuse block, what's going out of the fuse block, where the source wire is supposed to come from. So what I did is remove all the fuses. <clears throat> I took my largest wire, largest red wire going into the fuse block, which is this big bad boy here, and I assumed that this was our battery power going to the fuse block, and confirmed it by connecting my one of my leads to this battery line that goes into the fuse block, heavy gauge wire, set my meter on continuity, and I confirmed that it works by touching this together here just to make sure you always want to check because you might not have the switch all the way in the right position or your battery might be dead or something else and you're not 
you know, and then you're wasting time trying to probe things. So I've got one end of my continuity circuit connected to our battery input into the fuse block and then I take my probe and start probing fuses. Okay, and that'll tell you which fuses are live when this is connected to the battery. So, so you don't want your radio playing all the time, right? You don't want your, well, most of the time we don't wire them up that way. You don't want your wiper switch um, uh, powered all the time by battery power so that if you left it on it would kill your battery. You don't want your electric fan powered all the time or your coil of course for your ignition because that would be dumb. Uh, your turn signals, if you left a turn signal on it would kill your battery. Um, AC heater and gauges, all of that stuff um, doesn't need constant power but the hazards do. If your car breaks down you gotta leave your hazards on. Um, the headlights need to work so the headlight switch is live here and your brake lights always need to be on. So those uh, Oh, also the horn circuit. So those fuses are live right now off battery power. So the next step is to determine, okay, what is live with the key in the on position, right? So when we turn our ignition switch to on, what, uh, what circuits are getting power? So what I did is I took the two wires that are coming off the ignition switch in the on position and uh, put my lead on those two wires. And now I'm going to probe again on the fuse block and see which fuses are now live in the on position. So none of my accessories are live, which is correct. None of my battery powers are live because I'm disconnected from that wire now. When it's in the actual car, of course, those will be hot. Um, but my coil is hot. My turn signals are hot. My AC and heater is hot and my gauges are now hot. So the next circuit to check is our accessory circuit on the ignition switch. These are the, all the wires that go to our ignition switch. So if I check my accessory wire, which is going to connect to the accessory lug here on the ignition switch, and I do a continuity test again back to the fuse block this will tell me which fuses are now powered in the accessory position so when you click the switch when you click the ignition switch with the key to the left into your accessory position uh, it should turn things on like your radio right so now you probe again on your fuse block that has no fuses in it so you don't get confused and I see one accessory port is is live no fuse there just an accessory port uh, the radio fuse is live, the windshield wiper fuse is live, and the electric fan uh, for the radiator is live. There you go, that's how we probe um, the fuse block and determine that our ignition switch wires are correct and our battery source uh, from, in this case, from my distribution block um, powers the correct fuses. If I wanted to confirm that my hazards uh, my hazard fuse was powering the right wire, which in this case goes to our turn signal switch because our turn signal switch has our hazard switch on it. Um, I would connect my probe to the hazard fuse here with, without the fuse in it and then put the other end of the, of the probe, the other probe, into what I suspect is the hazard wire, what I have labeled as the hazard switch wire, and I should have a continuous circuit between the fuse block and the end of that wire. Spending, spending a little bit of time identifying every wire, going through your fuse block, making sure that all your circuits are labeled correctly will save you a whole lot of time troubleshooting down the road. Um, so there you go.
Well, that's it for today for the P48 project. Uh, I got a lot of the wiring done, a lot of the tedious little work in putting that fuse block in there, um, getting the grommet in the firewall, passing all my wires through where they need to go. And I started running them down the frame, generally where, where they need to run. The front harness needs to be put into some of that lovely convoluted tubing so that I can um, run it inside the frame rail. Taking care of the turn signal switch and got that labeled and wired and ready to go. I uh, put my connector ends on there so I can plug it into the uh, chassis harness. I just have to trim back the chassis harness a little bit, put some ends on there, connect it up, loom all that together, and then the turn signal switch is in. I also got my new TIG torch today. I've been needing a needing a new torch for the TIG. The, the old one uh, broke at the flex head and uh, that's causing me all kinds of problems using it. I have to tape the thing up to use it and if I try and adjust the head at all it leaks gas and doesn't weld worth the crap. So uh, I got a brand new TIG torch so I've got to get this set up. Uh, it's a CK torch from HTP Welding USA Weld. I can't wait to get that set up and uh, use that. I'm going to be doing the draw straw with that which I received, my stainless steel draw straw that I'm going to weld into my uh, steel bung for the uh, pickup and the return lines on the tank. Um, get the straws welded in and then I can drill the holes in the top of the tank, position those AN fittings, uh, pickup and, and the return and then weld them into the top of the tank and I'll be ready to connect my fuel lines there. Tomorrow I'm going to tackle mounting up that ignition switch uh, in the hidden location where I'm going to put it and uh, uh, getting all the wiring connected for that. Um, and I think I may make a secondary pigtail and come off of the ignition switch with my secondary pigtail just so that um, when I add the push button RFID start system to it, I already have the wires connected to the ignition switch. I don't have to dig through that and go through all that again. But, uh, probably get to the light switch as well. So I'll have all the switches that I currently have mounted up in here tomorrow uh, so I can move on to getting the engine started and getting the fuel system run and uh, you know, get those fuel lines in place. I've already mounted up the fuel pump. I got the uh, uh, billet aluminum filter today, so I'm going to mount that up in line. And uh, uh, once, I, once I get the straws welded into the tank, then I can proceed with that stuff and uh, pull those hoses and secure them. I've got some uh, really nice stainless clamps that are going to secure everything along the frame rail. Uh, it's going to look really nice and uh, be secure. So that's coming soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this kind of content, please click like and subscribe and follow along with the P48 project. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, leave them below. Thanks.